Hello world, welcome back to Razer RC. So one of the most confusing aspects of RC is that there are a lot of different types of battery connectors out there. Uh, it can be confusing on which ones you're supposed to buy. There's a lot of you know, adapters and stuff out there that you may need to pick up uh, depending on if you buy different brands. But I just wanted to kind of cover all the different connectors out there, sort of the pros and cons uh, between the different connectors and then talk about the one that I prefer the most I also kind of want to cover that uh, it's important, I think, to standardize on a connector. So as you get into RC, you might pick up one or two vehicles and okay, maybe you have got a Traxxas or an Arma or an Axial or whatever. That's fine if you only have one or two vehicles. But as you kind of move along your RC career, you'll find that you're buying vehicles from different brands, having a lot of different types of connectors. And so uh, I do highly, highly recommend you just pick a connector, standardize on that. So all your cars, all your batteries, uh, use that exact same connector. That'll just make your life 10 times more simple. You won't need all these adapters when you're charging or trying to run vehicles or you might forget to bring an adapter or the adapter breaks or whatever. So definitely pick an adapter, just go with it. Um, I'll personally talk about the one I like, but I did want to cover all the other ones out there in case you wanted to make your own choice. So let's get into it. So first off is really no connector at all. Uh, if you're doing any sort of 110 scale racing, the most popular type of connector is what's really called like an inboard connector. So you've got a battery like this. This is my Gen Z 6000 milliamp red line. But as you can see, the battery just has these little plug holes and there's no actual connector coming out of it. Uh, the charge port is really just a little uh, two and a half millimeter plug right there on the back side. But yeah, for 110 scale racing, really people don't generally use connectors. You can use connector if you want, but uh, most race level batteries are pretty much gonna be inboard like this where you just have your ESC and your battery leads are just four millimeter or five millimeter plugs and they just plug directly into the battery like that. So the reason for this, the reason nobody uses a battery connector is for two things. One is that you get a little bit better current flow. So uh, if you're running like a spec race car, like a 17.5 turn uh, two wheel drive buggy, uh, this provides a little more current flow. Second reason is it just reduces more additional points of failure. So you don't have all these additional adapters and stuff in between the battery and the ESC. And you just have this really nice clean uh, design. Now downsides of this, uh, number one is you can reverse the polarity accidentally and if you do that you'll pretty much blow up your $100 ESC so uh, that's really the biggest downside so generally you want to cut the battery leads to the length uh, to make sure you cannot accidentally plug this in backwards so for example this positive does not actually reach all the way to the negative side that way you won't accidentally do it at least when you plug it into the car so that's the major major downside. Um, but that's pretty much it. I guess charging is a little more complicated because you have additional lead uh, for that balance port. But uh, yeah, for 10 scale racing, pretty much everyone just runs direct connection or no connection or inboard connection, whatever you want to call it, uh, where they just run the EC directly into the battery. Okay, so first up we have what's called the Dean's plug or T style connector. Uh, this is probably the closest thing to like a uh, standard connector out there. Still used on some vehicles like Red Cat Racing. Um, also team associated RTR vehicles also come with Dean's plug style. It's also called T style because that's the generic version. Dean's plugs are pretty much uh, trademarked versions and uh, they're kind of sensitive to people basically making copies out there. But uh, the way this works is there's basically like kind of these spring loaded uh, connectors up here on the front and then on the back side, you have the actual tabs that you actually solder onto. Uh, pauses to this, um, it is kind of, it's pretty common. A lot of people out there uh, still use these Dean's plugs, but the main downside to these things is that they are low amperage. You really want to really only run up to maybe 2S or 3S lipos. You do not want to run these for like 4S, 6S, 8S lipos. Uh, they just cannot provide a full amount of current and you can end up melting these things. Other downsides are a little bit more difficult to solder up. Um, you do have to make sure you use heat shrink tubing on the wire side and then you solder it up and then you have to heat shrink it over. You, it is also possible to melt the housing as you heat up your soldering iron and, and heat up the wires and stuff. So uh, you gotta be a little more careful with that. And the last thing is that these little spring loaded clips here, as you plug them in, they can kind of wear out, they can kind of loosen and then not have, provide a super secure 
uh, connection so if you're doing like serious bashing um, they do tend to kind of unplug by themselves so yeah a lot of downsides to the Dean's plugs not a whole lot of upsides uh, for me personally I just kind of use these for like small scale stuff so like 14 scale, 12 scale, that kind of thing, or smaller, because uh, it is sort of a standard connector, but otherwise I generally uh, use a different connector. Next up we have the Traxxas connector, and as you might guess, this is the uh, standard connector that comes on all Traxxas vehicles and batteries. Uh, it is a proprietary connector. You cannot technically actually buy uh, Traxxas connectors anymore, at least on the battery side. I think you can still buy the EC side connectors. So uh, you really are supposed to just buy Traxxas stuff which come with these connectors already. So pros of the Traxxas connector. Um, it is reusable and fairly easy to use actually. So the way it works is you got these little prongs that you uh, solder onto the end here and then you basically just slide them into the connector and they lock in place and then um, yeah as you make the female and male together then they just kind of slide it up against each other and provide that connection um, you do not need to use heat shrink which is nice you know the the ends are basically covered uh, by the connector here in the back so uh, you don't have to use any heat shrink um, they are reusable which is pretty cool so if at any time you want to take this off an ESC or battery, you can basically just push these prongs back out with like a flathead screwdriver, get them back out, clean them up, and then uh, reuse the connector if you like. Uh, downsides to this are that it is proprietary. Nobody else uses the TRX connectors. Um, so if you have other brands, other vehicles, you probably want to pick a different choice. The other downside is that they're not really spring loaded or anything. So um, these can kind of wear out a little bit. Um, and get a little bit looser over time and not provide as secure of a fitting and then you know you, you, They can tend to come out and come undone uh, when you're doing some heavy bashing um, Yeah, then and then obviously the last thing is you can't even really buy these technically so you can buy uh, Third-party ones on eBay or Amazon or whatever, um, but technically TRX battery side connectors are not sold to the public Next up we have the XT90 connector. So this is a pretty popular uh, connector style. It's high amperage, they make different versions. This one for example is 90 amp, they also make a 60 amp, I think even a 120 amp, not 100% sure, but um, really good connector. Pros of this are that um, they are easy to use, so you pretty much just kind of solder each wire up to uh, the little uh, ports there uh, and you have this little cover so you don't need any heat shrink and you just kind of slide that on uh, after you're done soldering. Um, it does have little prongs here on the front which you can kind of adjust so you can kind of split those open a little bit more if you want a tighter fit or you know kind of squeeze them together if you want a little bit of a looser fit so a really nice connector not associated with any particular brand so uh, you know if you want kind of a generic uh, third-party type connector the XT90 is a really good choice these used to come on the really old Armas I believe um, but now Arma was picked up by Horizon Hobby so Right, uh, armors are all now, now selling Horizon Hobby connectors, but a uh, very good connector. Um, downsides, not a whole lot of downsides to this other than uh, nobody really sells this in particular. So um, if you're buying a Traxxas, you're buying Arma, or you're buying a Team Associate or a Red Cat or whatever, nothing is going to generally come with an XT90. Um, but it is kind of a standardized connector because it's not owned by any particular brand. Next up we have the EC5 connector. So this used to be the standard connector from Horizon Hobby. It used to come on all the Horizon Hobby vehicles. So Horizon, if you're not aware, owns Arma, owns Axial, owns Losi, owns ECX. So a lot of brands out there are owned by Arma. And this is their standard connector. So the EC5, uh, pretty good connector. It's very similar to the XT90 uh, style connector, um, but it does have some differences. One is that the way you solder it up is a little bit differently. The plugs are actually separate from the housing. So you gotta solder the wire directly into the plug first, and then you gotta slide the plug directly into the housing, and that's how you kind of get it working. Um, Downsides to the EC5s are it's probably the hardest connector to actually solder up, uh, especially if you use this style of bullet connector uh, with the full cup style. Um, the wires can get kind of big and hard to kind of get into that, that cup. They do actually make different styles, uh, which, what I call like the half cup style. So something like this where, uh, you know, it's kind of like the XT90, it's just a half cup and you can solder just onto that little tab there without having to plug it into the hole. That does make it a little bit easier. Other downsides, 
Um, there are a lot of different versions of this. So the way you slide the plug into the housing can depend. Um, there's actually kind of a taper to the plug. So this one you can see the bottom uh, is kind of tapered there. And so that means you slide it in this way, but some of them, you know, they're kind of squared off on the bottom. That means you, you slide it in from the bottom. So a lot of different versions out there. Um, good things are you can buy generic versions for fairly cheap on eBay or Amazon. Uh, just double check which way you slide in because it may make your life a little more difficult other downsides are they're not really reusable it's pretty hard to get these plugs out of the housing once they go in so generally you're gonna to have to cut it off or, or tear apart the connector or something if you want to try to reuse it um, but yeah those that's kind of the standard EC5 connector from Horizon that's generally what I used to use but now I've switched on to something better So my personal favorite type of connector is the Spectrum IC5 connector. Uh, this pretty much combines all the advantages of the XT90 along with the EC5. So it's kind of a combination of those two. As you can see, it's got the plugs already in the housing. So you just solder directly onto these things. And then it's got a nice little cover you can just pop on afterwards. Make sure this is already on the wires, of course. Um, and then um, it's reusable. So you can just kind of pop this cover off. You just squeeze it here on the sides and it pops right off. And then you can desolder the wires if you need to. So the cool thing about this is it's fully compatible with the EC5s. It's coming on all the latest Horizon hobby vehicles, so Arma, Axial, Low C, etc. They're all switching over to the IC5, fully backwards compatible with the EC5. So you have no problems with um, any old batteries you might have running the EC5. So I really, really like this connector. Um, downsides are that it is expensive. These sell for, I think, a pack of two for like $11. So you're talking $5 a connector, uh, but they are reusable, so which is a nice thing if you ever have a battery goes bad or ESC that goes bad or whatever. So yeah, that's pretty much it. An overview of all the different connectors out there. There are some old, older ones like the Molex Tamiya style connector or just sort of the banana plug style connector. But for me personally, um, I do like the Spectrum IC5 connector the best. It is a little more pricey, but it is actually one of the easier ones to solder up and it is reusable. So it kind of pays for itself in the long run. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely hit the like, share and subscribe buttons. I look forward to more videos soon. Thanks for watching.